Welcome to Bounce Around Savannah, where positive people are doing positive things. So many times in the news we hear about people, innocent, good people, being attacked on our streets and around the country because honestly they just weren't paying attention. They forgot where they were. And tonight our objective is to make sure that you have the tips you need in order to remain safe. I'm honored to have Amy Thurman with me as well as Gary Glomboski and they're going to be our safety and security experts this afternoon as we talk about just uh, how we can all do a better job of taking care of ourselves. Yeah, I think, you know, one of the biggest things that, you know, here lately, you hear on the news and see in the press is, uh, you know, people need to be aware. Uh, and I think what a lot of people miss is that they don't know how to be aware. So we're going to kind of discuss that and maybe uh, give some people some good tips on how to do that. One of the things, Amy, that we, we were discussing beforehand is um, we get so caught up in our own little lives that we're not really, even though we look, we're not really taking in what's happening around. Right. It's very easy to get caught up in what you're doing. If you're playing on your phone or having a conversation with a coworker, you're not necessarily paying attention to what's going on around you. So Gary, what would you say to uh, every, right now there are probably people who are at work or out shopping at a grocery store who are going to have to make that trek home in some way and they have to be involved with the, in the elements around them. What do you say to them? Well, you know, I think that uh, people look or looking at things all the time, but a lot of times they don't really see what they're looking at. I think people need to make it a little bit more of a habit, be uh, knowing what they're looking at, seeing things. Uh, if something doesn't look right, you know, take take action. You know, we don't want to get involved in a critical situation. We want to try and avoid it if at all possible, obviously. Uh, but if we get caught in the middle of it, then we need to know how to get out of it as well. So, and how to get out of that often involves us taking some action. And it doesn't necessarily have to be lethal action, it's try to get, get home. Non-lethal action, right. Avoidance and getting away is always your first goal. You don't want to just shoot without trying other alternatives first. So Gary, you also talked about those areas that we should focus on if, say I'm a woman and I'm walking out and someone grabs me from behind or, or in the front, what do I do to try to make it home? You know, there are there are literally thousands of different ways, you know, people will tell you, you know, if somebody grabs you, do this and this and that. And, uh, you know, uh, a lot of times they, they'll, they'll work, but uh, for, the, for the most part, people don't have the time nor the inclination to want to train that long, that hard to become that skillful at some of those things. So if you just focus on Four basic areas uh, from self self defense standpoint. You know, eyes, throat, groin, and knees. They're always pretty available. They're very soft targets. They're they're easily accessible, and it doesn't take a lot of strength to do any significant damage. Um, uh, everybody has poked themselves in the eye or bit themselves on the lip mm -hmm. accidentally once or twice, or bumped their knee or whatever the case may be, and it hurts. And that's the idea. It's like Amy was saying. We don't want to have to you know, injure somebody necessarily. We just want to get away. Um, it's up to them whether or not they, you know, they, they pursue us and, uh, you know, there's consequences. Mm -hmm. So if, you know, if, if, if I can make you let go so I can get away, that's all I want to do. That's the first objective. Mm -hmm. The first objective and of course those areas like you were talking about poking somebody in the eye, we've all done that to ourselves and even playing around as kids, but you're talking about poking with some force. Deliberately, mm -hmm. right, as much pressure as you can. So when you all see the things that, that we all see from time to time uh, around the country, things good, bad things happening to good people, what comes to mind in terms of how you could completely change that scenario? I know they need to be aware, but are there some tips that you can offer people who may be in those situations every single day? You know, I think that the, you know, I think the situational awareness thing has been done to death. Mm -hmm. I think people get tired of hearing it, but what it boils down to, again, is people need to be paying attention. They just need to pay attention. They need to have their head on a swivel. There's bad people, I've said this many, many times, there's bad people out there just looking for opportunities to do bad things to good people. Um, and if you don't make yourself a viable target, uh, if, you look, if, you, if you look like you may be too much trouble, people will leave you alone. Uh, and that's the whole idea, you know, you head up, head not down in your cell phone, mm -hmm. paying attention to what's going on around you and, you know, seeing, seeing people walk up to you and things like that. That's what, that's what people need to be more aware of. Um, uh, if they see something that doesn't look right, they need to listen to that little funny feeling they get, that spidey sense. If, if it doesn't feel right, most of the time it's not going to be right. Mm -hmm. So they have to take evasive action. If you, you walk it up, you're walking up to your car in a parking lot at night, for instance, and something just doesn't feel right, go back inside. You know, make a phone call, say something, do something, but don't just eh, ignore it. 
it's not that usually doesn't turn out well thank you all so much stay right there we're so excited to uh put these guys in some real life scenarios that all of us encounter every single day and make sure that we get those tips we need in order to make it home very safely we'll be back in just a moment Welcome back to Bounce Around Savannah. I am here with Gary Glomboski and we're talking about uh, one of the most common mistakes women make in terms of walking around not being completely aware. Yeah, well, let's not just say women because we see, see it all the time with everybody is uh, cell phones. Um, I don't know what we used to do without them, uh, but if, if people really were to look around uh, when they're out and about, they would see probably 90% of the people that have cell phones mm -hmm. are looking down at the ground, not paying attention to where they're going, doing whatever they're doing on the cell phone. Um, and it's just it's just a bad it's a very very bad habit um, to get into uh, because it affects your awareness you're not you're not looking around you're gonna step off a curb or you know just just something minor like that or step in front of a truck or become a victim of a crime because you're not paying attention to what's going on around you so you know you gotta get your head out of your cell phone well let's uh, let Miss Amy help us out show us what we typically do I mentioned women because we always have the handbags as well all right So this is Amy just coming out of a workplace, coming to her car. Hey, this is Amy, how are you? Yeah? Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. So is this what we normally see when we get out here? Right, I mean, you know, she's you know coming out to her car and uh, looking down, she's on the cell phone, she's looking for something. She stops. She hasn't looked around at all. Hasn't paid attention to to the car, or the cars next to her, or anything else. And you know, some people might say, "Okay, well, I don't want to be paranoid, mm -hmm. uh, but let's be a little bit better prepared. Just you know, look around before you approach your car to make sure that there's nobody there that shouldn't be there." Because even during the day, Correct. things happen. Exactly. That happens all the time. I mean, like we said earlier, you know, the bad guys are looking for easy targets, and if you're not paying attention to what's going on around you, you're an easy target. And one thing, when we get lost in these cell phones, that person can get up on us without us even realizing it. Yeah, I challenge everybody um, when they're out and about, be careful. But, you know, you see somebody with a cell phone, just see how close you can get to them. Uh, and you'd be surprised how close you can get to somebody who's just not aware. Now, they don't know you're not, you know, not a bad guy, but you could very well be. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, whether you're in the Walmart or whether, you know, no matter where you are, it doesn't make any difference. Bad guys are in those places, too, and you just need to be, you know, on your toes. So what would be the correct way of us, all of us, coming out here and getting to our cars? Well, um, what I would say is, you know, if, if, you come, if you're coming out of a building, especially around in a parking lot, maybe a little bit later at night or early in the morning, you know, take a second to kind of get your bearings, look around left and right, just like you would when you're crossing the street. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, you know, not just move your head, but actually see what you're looking at. Uh, and then as you're going, you know, walk in the middle of the, 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 the driving lane in the parking lot, you know, gives you, gives you a little bit more exposure to your vehicle, try and, you know, go straight line to your car instead of any kind of circuitous route. You know, uh, if, you, if, if you're in doubt, don't go out there, go someplace else. Uh, like we said earlier too, you know, we want to avoid the confrontation, not become engaged, because mm -hmm. uh, if we get engaged, then something bad is going to happen. One thing you'll be surprised about too is that people will walk you to your car. I've never left a grocery store at dusk and not had an right. escort. <laughs> I mean, all you gotta do is ask. And uh, you know, like I said, two is better than none. Uh, and uh, so you, you, you get, and yes, I did say none. Uh, so, but you, 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 you better in groups, mm -hmm. better in groups for sure. All right, thank you, sir. back to Bounce Around Savannah. We're going to learn from Gary some of the uh, equipment out there, tools out there that can help keep us safe when we're out and about. Well, yeah, there's, here's, a, here's a few things that uh, uh, I've collected and that are pretty pretty user friendly um, uh, across the board. And let's start over here. Um, a lot of people are familiar with um, coubatons or uh, fighting sticks, whatever you want to call them. And here's three, three different versions of them. Uh, they're all made out of the same material. They're made out of a, a hard plastic polycarbonate. And you would put your keys on here, uh, like I have mine, mine on one, uh, and use this for striking. Uh, there are uh, 
dozens upon dozens of different techniques that you can use, but a lot of them take a little bit more time. And so when we, uh, when we teach people how to use this, we teach basically striking techniques. Again, we want to try and escape and evade rather than try and get it and be engaged. So this will help you do that. It fits your hand. It's really lightweight, uh, easy to kind of keep with you. Uh, and this, again, you're striking in those sensitive right, areas you talked about earlier. Right, strike to the soft areas all the time. Uh, the good thing about this this thing is that it is hard, so if you did hit somebody on the back of the hand or an elbow or something like that, you'd still cause some, uh, I won't say significant damage, but the potential is there. Uh, pain, it would make people let go. This is another version. Uh, uh, this one is particularly popular with, with women because it's a little bit smaller, the profile's a little bit flatter, uh, comes in a bunch of different color designs, but what I like about it is that it fits the smaller hand much better, and you still have the uh, Point. the pointy end on the end of that. And, and most people wouldn't give this a second look. Mm -hmm. um, this is uh, made by the same company that's that's making these other ones, and this is just a uh, a stylus. It looks like a pen. Mm -hmm. uh, you could use it for a bunch of other stuff, but it's it's very very hard. Uh, uh, again, it's small. It's got pointy end on one, flat end on the other. Again, use it for striking those sensitive areas. And, and a real effective, and it's real easy to carry with you. And, it, and nobody would give that a second look. Um, so uh, really handy. Then we get into some stuff that's a little bit, probably a little bit more uh, familiar to most people, pepper spray. Um, most pepper spray that's available is is decent. Um, the, the, big, uh, the big thing that you have to remember when you purchase it is how hot it is. It comes at different heat levels and uh, we recommend 2 million Scoville units. Uh, it'll say it on the back here how, how much that is. It's pretty hot. Mm -hmm. um, again, non-lethal. Um, uh, you can carry it with you. It's very convenient. Uh, they, make, they make canisters smaller than this even, um, but uh, uh, pretty effective uh, when used uh, you know, the way it's supposed to be used. Um, the thing that everybody has to remember about all this less lethal stuff is that it's just that. Um, you're not going to spray somebody with pepper spray or hit them once with uh, one of these other implements and they're going to just immediately fall down in a quivering mass. Right. It takes a little bit of time, but a couple of things that well, I really... One thing with this pepper spray, though, you have to be really careful with that. Doesn't uh, wind well, play a yeah, role in uh, you, that? You definitely want to be uh, downwind. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, make sure it's blown away from you. And depending on what kind of uh, spray it is. Some of them come out in a mist or mm -hmm. a fog. Some of them come out in a stream. Again, we recommend the stream because you can see it where it's going and, right. and it makes it a little bit easier to, to direct. Um, we are really, really big uh, proponents of high intensity personal flashlights. Uh, these are two, two variations. There are dozens out there um, uh, that take regular batteries. Uh, uh, you want to get something that's fairly bright. This one has got old batteries in it so you can see it's not, not very bright here, but um, something small uh, that you can shine in somebody's face when you're coming out at night looking around your car or before you go in your house. Mm -hmm. um, this one is uh, uh, pretty bright. This is a little over um, about 300, 300 lumens, which is pretty bright at night. This is really bright. But two things I like about this one is that it's made out of aluminum and you can keep it clipped in your pocket just like a pen, but you could use this just like you could the Kubaton right here too, because it is made out of aluminum. I, you could shine this on somebody and, and you can you could uh, use it for striking. So you're kind of killing two birds with one stone. Uh, fairly inexpensive. They do make them uh, that are up to 800 plus lumens, which is really, really bright. Mm -hmm. um, think landing, uh, like uh, uh, aircraft landing light bright. Wow. So, um, at least it seems that way, not not actually. But uh, these things are pretty bright, but they're 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 relatively inexpensive, and everybody should have one. Um, really good, totally legal to have, just like the pepper spray, uh, as well as the coupons. Now, one thing I want to ask you about, though, a lot of people have gotten into those stun guns. Mm -hmm. What is your view on those? Uh, we've talked about this before. Uh, uh, tasers and stun guns, a little bit different. The difference is that the stun guns, you, you hold it in your hand, mm -hmm. you have to make contact with the individual. The taser, you hold it in your hand, and it actually shoots two barbed wires out. All right. Um, the, the, the problem I have with the stun guns is that you have to maintain contact. You've got to be really close to the individual. I mean, you're going to be touching them, so you're going to be close to them. And if, uh, uh, if you're shocking them, and they, and they happen to be sweaty, or they grab you, there's a possibility that you could get shocked as well and then mm. think you know bad things happen so um, they might have their place but again I don't like the uh, you have to be so uh, so close to the individual the tasers uh, are can be effective but they're not foolproof uh, like 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 everything is nothing's foolproof uh, and having the ability to be able to stop somebody away from you that far away from you works but they can be defeated as well they're not hundred percent effective hundred percent of the time 
So uh, people want to weigh their options. Um, you know, with something that if you want to keep somebody away from you, pepper spray is good. Uh, you can use it at a little bit of a distance as well. Taser is good too uh, if it when it when it works. We're going to show you how to protect yourself once you get home. When we come right back. Welcome back to Bounce Around Savannah. We're continuing our conversation with Gary and Amy. Now we're talking about some uh, tools you can use at your home to keep you and your family safe. Yeah, there's you know there's a, a whole range of things now that, that are out there. I mean, uh, security systems are, are no longer like uh, just for really wealthy people. I mean, you could get really good security systems relatively inexpensive. So, but there's a lot of little things that you can do uh, to keep yourself safe. And we're going to start down here. Um, this is just a plain old key ring, uh, and what it the reason I chose this one specifically is a lot of times people will take their cars somewhere to get washed or detailed or, you know, get worked on or whatever the case may be, and they need the key to the car, but they'll give, a lot of times people will give all their keys to somebody, even for a short period of time. So this is just here to remind people, say, hey, you know, put your key, uh, your car key on a separate ring that you can take off, and that way nobody's going to have access to your, to your uh, house keys or any other keys you may have on your key ring. So that's just to remind people to do that. Um, a lot of times, uh, for years and years and years, people leave key over the door or under the flower pot or whatever the case may be. And um, there are dozens of different places you could probably hide a key. Um, this one I ran up on quite by accident, and I thought it was kind of interesting. This is a sprinkler head. Um, uh, it's, a, it's just for, for to hide a key. It's a regular sprinkler head, and uh, it looks exactly like the ones I have around my house. And I would never in a million years have guessed that. So just as a um, kind of a, uh, an interesting uh, an interesting option if you don't have any place to get it. We had a... I do like that idea. We have, everybody's familiar with these magnetic, stick it to the table, uh, the magnetic key boxes, but Amy brought up an interesting point earlier. She said she's got one um, that she wanted to put on her car, but there's nothing metal that she could attach it to because right. we, there's so much plastic being used in bodies and, you know, stuff fiberglass. like that, mm -hmm. fiberglass and everything else. So. Um, it, they work when they work. They're actually they actually been around for years and years and years. But you got to have some place to put them. Um, every door, outside door, uh, especially solid doors, ones that don't have paned windows or anything like that, mm -hmm. should have a viewer, a wide angle viewer, so that when you look out from the inside, you can see your entire front porch or what's in front of your door, who's in front of your door. Um, uh, real handy, real easy to install. Cheap insurance right here. I think that. Um, if you have a safe room in your house too, you should also have one of these on on your safe room door too. Whether that be a bedroom door or whatever the case may be, just just for uh, uh, making sure that you can see what's going on out in your hallway or whatever the case may be. And um, everybody knows familiar with these uh, kitchen timers or uh, uh, for appliances. Um, this one's a manual one, real simple. You plug it in, you plug your appliance in here, you set the time you want the appliance or light to go on or mm -hmm. off, and you leave it alone. Um, Works like a champ. They're cheap. Uh, um, they also make some, electro uh, some electronic ones that you can set, have some push buttons on them. A little bit more expensive, but uh, still real, real handy to have around. Whether mm -hmm. you're in town or out of town, doesn't make any difference. Uh, it makes your house look lived in, so good deal uh, with that. Um, some other real, I, I don't have this with me, but. Uh, Could you talk about that safe room? Sure. Because. Uh, um, you may not be familiar with what you're talking about. Everybody uh, probably familiar with Jody Jody Foster's movie Safe Room, all right? And panic Room. Panic Room, mm -hmm. all right? My bad. Uh, <laughs> and uh, she spent a lot of money building a armored room in her in her apartment, all right? And uh, a lot of people may be interested in that, but don't have the the uh, the wherewithal to, to go through all that. Right. So what do you make your safe room? Well, it all depends on your living arrangement. You know, what do you, who do you have in your house? What kind of house do you, you have, mm -hmm. et cetera. So my suggestion is always to start with a master bedroom. Um, if somebody breaks in your house, a lot of people think, well, I'm going to go hunt him down. I'm going to grab my trusty shooting iron, and I'm going to go out there and hunt him down, and that's the worst thing to do. Um, if you're already in your house, you're already in a secure area, stay there. Um, uh, if you have kids, there's other, other things you have to consider, obviously, but for the most part, uh, master bedroom is your safe room. Uh, have your plan, how you're going to call 911, who's going to do that. Um, and this, on, on your bedroom door, some people sleep with their doors open, some sleep with them closed. Um, but if I knew somebody was in my house, I would close my door. Right. Gives them another barrier, I can lock that. I may have extra locks on it. And this would allow me to see outside the door if anybody was in a hallway or something like that. So in your safe room, you want to have all your necessary stuff, your cell phone or an old cell phone that's charged up. Uh, if you decide to have a weapon, that's going to be there. Um, spare set of house keys and whatever else you feel you may need. Mm -hmm. um, 
to, to get through the situation. So, and it's going to be different for everybody. Some people even make their children's room their safe room, so that they can just get up, take whatever they need, go to their children's room, and they just they hunker down there right. instead of having to go and pull their kid back. So, there's a lot of different things that you have to kind of think through with your plan. So much. We'll be back in just a moment. Welcome back to Bounce Around Savannah. I hope you've learned some valuable information today with Gary and Amy. If you'd like to learn more, please look them up. You can find them at www.gtac.us and on Facebook at the Global Tactical Training Group. We'll see you next week right here Monday on Bounce TV.